Welcome back everyone to our exciting journey exploring handmade sugarcane production facilities around the world. Today, we're diving deep into the heart of a traditional sugarcane workshop, where we'll witness the tireless labor that transforms juicy sugarcane stalks into gleaming blocks of golden sugar. The very first step, and arguably the most crucial to kick things off, pressing the cane. All the raw materials are gathered right here, ready to feed into the mighty machine. Take a close look at this pressing machine. It's a powerful mechanical system with massive gears and belt drives, engineered to generate an enormous crushing force. And here's the amazing result of that tons of pressure. A stream of pure cane juice, still bubbling with freshness, begins its incredible journey. Steam rises instantly. This heating process is absolutely vital. It not only starts the concentration, but also prevents natural fermentation, ensuring the sugar's pure quality. Now we're in the fiery core of the factory. The air is thick with steam. This is the concentration stage. A series of pans sit over a furnace system. The temperature must stay incredibly steady. The artisans stir constantly, using tools with super long handles. This stirring isn't just for show. It serves two clear scientific purposes. First, it prevents the sugar from sticking to the bottom and scorching, which could ruin the entire batch. Second, the constant motion speeds up water evaporation, making the cane syrup concentrate faster and more evenly. After hours of boiling, once the juice has reduced to a thick syrup reaching the exact concentration, a trade secret judged by the expert eye, it must be removed from the heat immediately. It takes two strong men, working in perfect sync, to lift the scorching hot and incredibly heavy pan. The golden, viscous syrup is poured into a large rectangular wooden trough. This sets the stage for crystallization. This is the key technical secret. The strong, continuous stirring triggers crystallization. It breaks down large sugar crystals, creating a fine, uniform texture with a brighter color. Without this step, you'd end up with a rock-hard, uneven block. Once the sugar reaches the right consistency and temperature, it's quickly transferred to long wooden molds, pre-divided into sections. The liquid sugar fills them, taking its final shape. After some time for the sugar to cool and harden, the worker uses tools to release the blocks from the molds. And here it is folks, the final product of this grueling process, solid blocks of handmade cane sugar with a beautiful amber glow. They're neatly stacked on wooden tables to cool completely, releasing any remaining moisture before packaging. From the cane fields through fire sweat and masterful techniques passed down generations, we get one of nature's sweetest gifts. From those rustic golden blocks born of furnace heat and worker sweat, the sugar's journey doesn't end there. Now we're stepping into a totally different world, a clean modern space where sugar isn't just food, it's a medium for art. It all starts with sugar syrup, but unlike those big cast iron pans, this is precise science. A digital thermometer is clamped securely to the pot side. The moment it hits that perfect temperature, the syrup is poured onto a large shiny metal tray. This surface acts like a giant heat sink, cooling the hot candy mass evenly. And now the canvas is ready. This is where the artistry kicks in. The artisan starts adding food coloring. The hot candy mass is divided into portions. A big chunk gets mixed with white. Smaller parts are dyed black, red, and other vibrant hues. Each colored block, while still hot, is pliable like clay, but clay over 100 degrees Celsius. 
Let's focus on the white candy block. The artisan, wearing heat-resistant gloves, begins a process called pulling the sugar. The mass is repeatedly stretched, folded, and stretched again. Why do this? It's an extraordinary technique. By pulling and folding over and over, the artisan incorporates millions of tiny air bubbles into the candy. These bubbles change its physical structure, turning it opaque and bright white. They also create a crispy, airy texture when you bite in. Now comes a masterpiece of assembly. The different colored blocks are rolled into long, smooth strips. And here's the finesse. Those pulled white strips are used as dividers. Why? These white barriers are crucial. They keep the vibrant colors from bleeding into each other, ensuring razor shark patterns in the final candy. The colored strips are layered together. A large white cylinder, the candy's core is placed in, the colors are wrapped around it. The whole multicolored mass is compressed tightly and finally encased in an outer red shell. Imagine, the entire intricate rainbow design is now sealed perfectly inside a large cylinder. From here, the grand stretching begins. The artisan applies even force and heat, rolling and pulling. The most mind-blowing part, that complex inner pattern, despite being elongated, stays proportionally perfect. The thick cylinder gradually thins into a slender candy rope, but the rainbow structure inside remains intact. Finally, once the rope reaches the desired diameter, the artisan swiftly coils it, a classic spiral for the rainbow lollipop. One decisive cut, and a sweet, vibrant work of art is born. From the heat of traditional furnaces and the sweat of laborers, to the precision of thermometers and the skillful hands of artisan. These are two worlds of sugar, one rustic, one refined, but both are astonishing processes worthy of our admiration.